<laughs> oh wait, me. Oh. I tried got it by staying in this meeting. You consent to being live streamed. Got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that for us, Cal. You're welcome. <laughs> Here she's. I'm clearing it for myself. I got it by staying in this meeting. You consent to you signed your life away. <laughs> I think we are live. Let's see. Are we live? Elaine? Perfect. All right. We are live. Uh, everyone, welcome to the Velvet Rope 25 uh, Dancers Reunion. The kids, an evening with the kids. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who is logging in right now and who is watching us live. We very much appreciate it. And uh, just before we get going, we have a little bit of uh, uh, things just to get out of the way. So first of all, not out of the way, just to mention, first of all, I just wanna thank everyone who is taking part in this tonight. I'm gonna introduce the dancers in just a sec. Um, I also wanna thank the people that helped me put this together. So Tina Landon, uh, big high five to Tina. Um, Amy Stevland, also uh, Mikey Garcia, uh, Kristen Jerome, and Elaine Gilmore. Thank you so much for helping with all of this. And now without further ado, let us announce all the amazing dancers from the Velvet Rope 25 tour, or I should say the original Velvet Rope. Nikki Pantenberg. Hi, Nikki. Hi. <laughs> we have Kelly Kono, I think all the way in Vancouver, right? Or close to? Yeah, Bowen Island, BC. There we go. <laughs> A fellow Hi, Kate. everybody. Uh, <laughs> Teresa Espinosa. Hi, Teresa. Hi, everyone. Uh, Tina's there. There's T, Queen T. <laughs> uh, Tice DiOrio and Rob, Rob Vinson. <laughs> and we have a special surprise. I know a lot of the fans do not know about this. We were working behind the scenes to make this happen. And a big shout out to the recent Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, uh, Jimmy Jam. Woo! I'm taking dance lessons. <laughs> I'm taking dance lessons. <laughs> taking dance lessons. Perfect. We're so happy to have all of you tonight again. Thank you so much, everyone who's uh, logging in and watching. You can um, please put some questions in. We're going to get some uh, questions from the audience a little bit later. And uh, yeah, we have some people moderating as well, taking your questions. And don't forget that you can follow us, of course, always on this YouTube channel, Kelly Alexander Show. All right. So, Tina, I'm starting with you. Um, can you let us know, take us back to the, the day uh, when you got a clue from, from Janet uh, that a new project was coming and did you already know at that point that you wanted you know kelly and nikki and seanette back um <laughs> y'all know my brain is fried after <laughs> years and all, i know but i want to say yes because kelly and nikki were well you guys were both living with me at the time yes in between janet and albert rope and so, yes, we kind of knew, but I don't, I never told the girls because again, I, I want to make sure before like a hundred percent. And so sometimes Janet will say something or her and Renee are kind of vibing and they're throwing things out. And if I were to, uh, you know, say immediately what they tell me, there'd be a lot of disappointed dancers in the world. So I would always hold back, but yeah, I think we were always talking about stuff. And again, I never took it for granted. So at, yes, at, I want to say yes at that time that it was there was talk about Nikki, Kelly and Sean coming back. And how did you cast like Tice and Rob and Mike and Teresa? And uh, I think that's the rest of them. <laughs> I think that's the rest. Well, they'll have to help remind me. I want to say I know that we were already thinking of Rob. Rob did the uh, freestyle part in Runaway. And at that point, I know Janet was already looking at him. But again, it was still, we hadn't even had auditions yet. So he was already kind of a thought in her mind. And then I want to say Teresa and Tice, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys were at the audition. Sorry. <laughs> Those are my dogs now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tice, were you at the audition? Stop. Yes. Okay. Yes, I went to the audition, yeah. But I, I was, um, I went to the audition, I showed up, it was very crowded, and um, I, I, stayed, I, I stayed in my car because I got really discouraged, and I, I got really discouraged, so I stayed in my car, and I was like, like, probably crying and then I and then I decided to just go in and the, it, the audition already started but I was sitting in my car because I was completely discouraged and I all those people 
made me feel like uh, I'm not going to get this job. And then I just like got out of my car and said, okay, go in there. <laughs> Yay. I never, never heard that story before. That's crazy. Of all people to be insecure. I, was like, totally <laughs> I know that doesn't, that doesn't sound like that would be something Tice would do. No. It happened. It happened. <laughs> Teresa, can you tell us how it went down for you? <clears throat> yeah, I think it, it was a process, right? I, Finally got in front of Tina and then eventually met Janet down the line and I was dancing at the Roxbury and Rob and I were, you know, we were kill the circles over in the club scene and Tina, I think caught, uh, you know, she watched me a little bit and at least that, that's what I thought, you know, and eventually the, the auditions came and I just felt really good. I had put in a lot of work, you know, aside from everything else and I was ready and you know, I didn't get it at first because uh, y'all did the pr promo tour first. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I made it to the end. Amazing. I'm happy. And then Christmas came around and Tina gave me a Christmas card. I don't know if you remember this. Tina. I, you kind of. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so I was crying that Tina Landon gave me a Christmas card. I was like, I'm such a fan. I'm just like, I'm always a fan. I'm a fan of everybody here. So, uh, you know, I was all, I, every time I got in front of Tina, I could not even form a sentence because I was such a fan. And, and eventually I saw the, I read the card and it said something like, Janet and I were wondering if you'd like to be a part of the Velvet Rope project. And I was like, oh my God, that's my favorite song. And Tina's looking at me like, your favorite song it's for the the tour and I was like what <laughs> so I it was just the one song and I was freaking out over doing something to Velvet Rope the song and it actually ended up being the tour and eventually down the line um you know I got pulled in as a swing dancer so that was my entryway into the project Rob but, can you tell us what it was but, like for you too oh go Kelly go 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 sorry I, I just just I watched the Velvet Rope tour today. I had to. I haven't seen it forever. And I was like, I was explaining You're to you. doing your homework, Kel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> half the time, I'm like, I don't even remember what song was on what album. But anyways, I was doing my homework. No, actually, I was just, I literally was just like watching it with such like love in my heart. But, but I was like telling Thomas, my man, I was like, yeah, and, and Teresa was the swing and, and you opened the show like you were like the full opener. You know, I was like, now that's a swing that jumps on, <laughs> that jumps on a tour, becomes part of the tour. And not only that opens the show. That was crazy. It was, so I, it was an insane ride. It was just like literally the next door kept opening as we went along and every step was like, oh, I can't believe I'm here. I'm so grateful. And if this is as far as I get amazing and then the door kept opening. So yeah, I, yeah, there was an amazing unfolding for sure. Rob, what was it like for you when you, uh, you know, got the news obviously and, 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 and meeting the rest of the team, I know you knew some of them already, but what was it like for you to get that, that call and, and know that you were heading out? Um, yeah, I got the call from, uh, from the camp, Tina, letting me know that uh, Janet told me just to come down to the callback because I was already considered to be part of the tour. Like she said, I was part of the uh, uh, runaway video freestyling, so that was already considered. So uh, I was just hoping that they kept me in mind because, you know, things changed last minute. And uh, so then uh, they was like, um, you know, to come down, just come down to the callbacks I mean, and then just check out everybody. Uh, we're still considering things, but just come check it out. OK, so that's pretty much how it was for me. That's awesome. I agree with Teresa with the whole freestyle thing, too. I wanted to ask Jimmy before we get into like actual tour stuff, Jimmy, did you know um, pretty early on in the making of the album of the Velvet Rope that Janet was going to go back out on tour and that this was going to be like a big, big one for her? Yeah, because as we were crafting the songs, sometimes we would actually kind of think about, you know, she would say, I can't wait to do this one on tour or we have to really figure out something, a way to do this, you know? So yeah, I think she was always keeping that in mind and the other thing was in the creative process, the cool thing was Janet in, always had the dancers around. Um, like I know uh, Kelly and Tina and, and Nikki were always kind of around 
So even their influence of watching them as we were creating tracks, just their kind of their movements and their kind of sensibilities really informed, you know, the music we were making. So it helped a lot. It was very inspirational to have them around. And so, um, yeah, so I think we always knew that there was going to be a Velvet Rope tour and it was being conceived even as the music was being made for the album. And Jimmy, did you also know, you know, coming, seeing for her, obviously do Rhythm Nation and then the Janet tour and then this, did you have an idea that this was going to be like super big for her? And like, because it really was a game changer and so many artists that, that came along after Janet were inspired by this tour and still talk about it to this day. I just knew to expect from Janet just excellence. And I also knew that, you know, once again, when you talk about the team of people that's around and that's what I'm so happy to be here today, is you see this creative group of people that inspire her, um, that push her, that really make it possible for anything that she wants to do happen. Like I know when she would say to us, you know, musically that I wanna do something, it's gotta have a beat like this, but I want it to have a break that sounds like this, or I wanna add in live strings, or I wanna rock, rock guitar, or I wanna take all of these different elements and really change kind of the concept of the way the music was made. Um, in her performances, she did the same thing. So to be able to call on Tina, who was able to fuse so many different kinds of dances to go with the music, whether it was hip hop or more rock based or ballet or whatever, and really take the way the music sounded was the way that the show actually was. So um, you gotta have a great creative team to do it. And I think Janet had that, but then she also had the vision and the trust to pull those things off because you can throw stuff at people and sometimes they're like, oh, I'm not sure, I don't wanna really do that. And I think Janet, I think, I mean, you guys can speak to it better from the, like the choreography standpoint, but I think you could throw things at her maybe that she wasn't initially comfortable with and she trusted that it was gonna be okay. And mm -hmm. when you're pushing the envelope like that, that's when you come up with something that's so creative and so different as the Velvet Rope Show. I remember seeing it the first time in its entirety it might have been for some the what I remember is New York, but I think I saw it before then. But I was just blown away just how theatrical it was and how beautiful it was. Um, and so to hear our music brought to life like that was such an amazing um, feeling and one that I get really with all of her tours, but particularly with that one. You know, can you speak to us um, about how quickly, obviously there was already, you know, familiarity and comfort and an energy with the girls, with Sean and Nikki and Kelly and yourself. Um, but when the rest of the team was added in, Gil and Mike, um, and Teresa and Rob, how quickly did that synergy really sort of present itself? Um, really right away. I mean, we really all kind of knew each other. Like I knew Rob and Teresa from the clubs and Kelly, and Nikki knew Rob and we knew Tice from the, from just from the dance community. And he was also in if a lot of people don't, I don't, I don't know if they know that, but he was in the video. Um, Mike was a newbie. And then we, and then I think Gil was pretty new too, to everybody, but they just immediately, everyone just vibed really well. And that also takes place during an audition. Like you see, if you're really looking, you really can see how things are going to line up. So for me, when I was looking at Mike, I thought he was going to be a great, uh, we, I've talked about this before, we're talking about bookends. He was going to be a great bookend or pair for Rob. And I thought Gil would be a great bookend or pair for, for Tice. Um, if it was Rob and Tice, it could have been weird. Or if it was Mike and Gil, it could have, if it was just those two guys, it could have been offset, right? And then with Teresa, Teresa kind of encapsulated that freestyle that really none of us girls had. Like Rob and Mike had it naturally. We're all like, yeah, no, we're gonna choreograph our freestyle. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> I still can't freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> right away. I'm gonna freestyle tonight. I'm just gonna have a freestyle session. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, first day of rehearsal, and I'm going to hit hit over to Tice for this. Um, Tice, what did it feel like walking into the room with with everyone that's here and, and some of the people that are not and, and just ready to rock? Were you ready to rock? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the first day of rehearsal, honestly, um, and just listening to everyone speak, I, 
this this album was truly uh, in my opinion, masterful, a masterpiece of music. And, and you know, what Tina and the whole team and Jen, what occurred from the beginning to end to me was completely um, otherworldly. It was otherworldly. The feeling, I feel like the only way to describe that first day of rehearsal, because it was like, you know, I had done, like Tina said, I, I was fortunate enough to be uh, chosen to do If and, partake in like one of those, like Amer I think it was a video MTV Music Awards performance, yeah? And so I had a little taste of it, but the first day was like literally uh, otherworldly. There's, there's nothing else to say, but it was just like complete focus and taking everything in. Cause I was like new, brand new in a sense, you know, cause um, you know, I'd known Kelly and Nikki and, and stuff like that, but um, it was it was magical and otherworldly from from where I was standing. You know? Kelly, Nikki, let's have your thoughts on first day rehearsal. We'll start with Kel. Are you sure you were brand new? <laughs> I felt brand new. Oh, I did. Brand Come new. on, man! You were like a veteran in the game at that point when you jumped on this tour. <laughs> I don't the first. I don't. Why don't you know where, where I what studio it was at? I, don't, I mean, we, we were in New York. I mean, or at least in New York. We were at the, in New York. We were in New York. We were starting like, right? I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember this far back. Okay. It's too long. Teresa, do you remember what rehearsal was like? Yes. Okay. I remember my first day. Um, definitely was at Alley Cat. Y'all were already in the rehearsal process because yeah. I came in later. And I remember you were already in rehearsals. I was on another job with Travis Payne for Drew Hill. Nice. <laughs> and um, I, I def, you know, I was, I had to finish that off. And, and then I was able to come to you guys after rehearsals and stuff. And I remember walking in the door and just, everybody's just in their thing. And for some reason, Tice and I, Tice just grabbed, I gravitated towards him right away. And I felt like he said, Hey, if you need anything, you know, I'm here for you. And um, I was hungry and I just was like open eyed and willing. Um, but yeah, Alley Cat was, it, you know, I don't know if it's still there, but it was a no, beautiful. It's not. Oh. No. Oh. I think Kelly and I, I think we kind of knew what to expect coming from the first tour. Correct. Um, and although, you know, Tina was pretty, you know. Um, Say it, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was mama bear um but it was always rehearsals were always like going it was like home to us you mm -hmm. know we, were, we had such a good time even though we were working really hard um it was always fun and, and, um, and that's what you I know I mean, I do remember there being a sense of like you know like with the new the new dancers joining us but but they but we all knew them we all we, are, we already knew everybody so it was like it was exciting to, it was to exciting. Know, you know what yeah. i mean to know that i'm gonna get to go on the road with tice like who yeah. you know like Teresa, like with everybody with rob like i i was on my very first gig with rob in canada like so all our paths met back up and now all of a sudden we're going on tour so i just i just remember it being just exciting i guess and fun and yeah. ready to you know ready for another one ready to yeah. be told told what to do right. with Tina and, and, <laughs> and thankful and grateful that we were working <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Tina this next this next question is for you <laughs> obviously as I, and I know Teresa wasn't out on on this one but when you guys went out on the promo tour you had that x amount of time to and I think you you did you only have two numbers ready on that like together again and and got till it's gone or did you have other ones I, yeah. I we were just promo back then that's what you did you only did one or two songs the two singles or the one single that was out and you took that song to every station in every country um and with us it was just the one version so okay um did you find that as some sort of good barometer though to to know and again obviously you already had nikki and kelly and sean like that that you've already been with them before but was that sort of a good barometer knowing or getting you prepared for what was coming with Velvet, like to get you ready to start doing the rest of the choreography for the tour? Uh, was the promo tour a good barometer? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess. I mean, 
um, I don't know. I guess I, that was my third tour. I already knew what to expect. I think if anything, it gave me a sense of what the group was going to be like and how we were going to vibe. And it, it just was magic on stage. I think it, you can look back at the, all those old, all the old footage and just go, holy cow. Like there was just like a thread that just connected each one of us when we were on stage. Uh, top of the Pops performance, which I believe was part of the promo tour, you were all, you were all in like velour suits, which looked amazing. But I was always wondering, were you dying of heat, and were they hard to dance in? I don't remember being hot, but it was hot. That's why we didn't take them on tour. <laughs> but we all loved them, you know. Like we, did. Dan, we did love them. We're like, yeah, we look dope in this stuff. But it was hot as. I remember loving it. I remember loving that suit or whatever it was. They were really baggy though. The pants were yeah. kind of baggy, right? <laughs> um, Rob, talk to us about when you were learning choreography from T. Um, which one did you find or which, yeah, which song did you find the most challenging to pick up or most intricate? Almost all of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all of them. You know, Tina is hardcore with the pinky being in the right place. So. Um, I, I know I had the choreography, but unfortunately my arms didn't look like it was doing it properly or they wasn't too spread out. Um, even though I was, uh, have long arms, but she still needed to sit in, uh, sit in a, a certain height and, uh, the fingers and hands had to be in a certain position. And, uh, I found that challenging cause I was never taught anything like that. So everything was just do the routine dance, get it over with. You're good. Now it's like, we all got to look like a mirror. All one person on stage with Janet. That was the most difficult. Uh, but I find the most difficult one was uh, one of my favorite. It was Rhythm Nation because it was a lot of nunchucks and head twisting and hands and stuff like that. So that was one of my challenging routine. Nice. What about you? What was the most intric intricate choreography to learn for Velvet Rope Tour? Well, I think Rhythm Nation is probably some of the most challenging choreography I probably have ever learned because it's so specific. And, <laughs> and I think too, like, as you do it, like every night, I think you find, you find nuance in it and you find the actual, what was so great about like what Rob is talking about, like in rehearsals, like we would all, I remember just really studying each other and ourselves <laughs> in the mirror and really trying to like encapsulate what, Tina wanted and and I know for me it was just about like trying to fall in in line with the the tone of the choreography but then finding myself and that's probably with any choreography you find yourself after you learn and get all of the details and what is is needed from the choreographer from the artist from each other it's like an it's 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 always evolving and I think every night that, that was exciting you know, with Tina's choreography, sometimes it's it's simplistic and so effective that you can't sit in the simplicity of it because you have to really bring it to life, you know, with the music. So, and it looks so incredible on film, as you can see, you know, from Velvet Rope, there's so many beautiful pieces of choreography. Like one of my favorites is Got Till It's Gone. Like, I just love it because it's so unique and it's got such a different vibe to it than some of the other pieces, you know, so. Uh, I, Teresa, I wanna to get to you about what your thoughts are on this. I know Jimmy has to leave soon. So Jimmy, I just wanted to ask you two questions. What is your favorite piece of choreography from the Velvet Rope Tour? And also, uh, do you have a message for the dancers before you have to go? Well, um, wow, it's tough. I do like the Got Till It's Gone choreography because it's so different. I mean, once again, like I was saying earlier, the song sounds so different because if you think about that, it's a hybrid really of a folk song, a, a hip hop song, an R&B song. Um, it's, it's a bop, but it's also very smooth. You know, it's kind of all of those elements and the dancing to me in that song and the choreography really has all of those elements to it. And when I, it's interesting hearing that the word detail is the word I've heard a lot about the way the choreography is. And that's the way we always try to do with the music. We tried to be very detailed about it. And so there were things that people were seeing or hearing and they didn't necessarily know they were hearing them, but 
they knew that they were liking it, you know, that one of those kinds of things. And I think that's what happens when you watch the choreography that you guys put together. There is a detail to it, like you were talking about hand position or finger positions and all of that. And to me, it's the missing part of when you don't see it, you don't know if you're not an expert, you don't realize, well, they're not holding their hands the same, but you just know it doesn't look as sharp, you know? So I think that's the thing I always appreciated was how first the attention to detail, but then the actual execution of it. And I think that's the thing I would say. And so in talking to the dancers, I mean, that's the thing. And, and I just want to thank you guys for bringing our songs to life. Um, it's, it's so important because to me, you know, we do the music, but the visuals that go with the music that we make is so important. And the fact that you guys bring that to life, not only through videos, but also in live performances, um, is an intricate part of the success of those songs. Mm -hmm. So I would just thank you guys. Um, I'm so happy to be here. I'm gonna stay on a little bit longer if I can and just listen, but I I just thank you guys so much. You don't know how important of a, of, of a process it is to have you guys as part of the creative, you know, part of what we do. Um, and, and you guys inspire us, you know, the way you dance, the way you, put things together and, and bring it for the fans to see is absolutely amazing. It's next, it's next level. So bravo. Thank you guys. Wow. Thank you for the music, Jimmy. Yes. Yeah. You are very welcome, but thank yeah. you as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you for creating like amazing music that we never got sick of. Like mm. I, I just know today, we still love it. Yeah. There's songs that just get old and tired and boring, like after you've heard them in rehearsal. But no matter how tired we were, and remember, Got Till It's Gone was towards the end. We were dying. And we're just like, oh my God, this just feels so. <laughs> you're just really dying on stage, but the music just drives you when it's that good. So thank you, Jimmy, for creating it for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and before I bounce back to Tarita, Teresa, I just want to, again, on behalf of the fans, Jimmy, thank you so much as well for creating the Velvet Rope and everything else you've done with Janet because it's timeless, it's still relevant, and it moves us to this day. So thank you so much. And again, congratulations to you and Terry on your Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. That's absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, so, Teresa, uh, yeah, first day of rehearsal for you or just sort of like, or sorry, sorry, choreography, choreography for you. What, what was the most intricate and, and, and to pick up? Well, because I came from a very fan perspective, walking in the room, I was doing my best to be observant of, of what Tina was doing, what everybody else was doing, and trying to pick up the details. But I think the magic sauce of what Tina brings to the table as a choreographer is the space. There's so much space, and it all makes sense, and it all flows, and it's, it, there is a ton of detail, and you have to be clean and then be yourself. And she was able to create something that I think each person in the, in the show was able to bring their personality. And I think not to compare to other things out there, but you know, there's a lot of, ka -ka 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 -ka, you know, and there, you know, but this, the magic is in the space. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> you know, Tina phenomenal, like just extraordinary at bringing the best out of everybody to the table. So I think that's the magic. Mm -hmm. um, Kelly and Nick, I obviously know you you guys were on the, the Janet tour, so you had already you know had to have mastered Rhythm Nation at this point. So I'm just wondering when it comes to Velvet Rope choreography itself, like from that album, uh, what sticks out to you? Is it I Get Lonely? Is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love me so much. I love Yeah. It. That is honestly one of my favorites, but like, no joke, watching the tour again today, the opening number. Oh, yeah. Uh, Velvet Rope. Yeah, Velvet Rope. Like, yeah. it wasn't necessarily like my favorite, like, song, I guess, off the album. But when I rewatch the tour, I go, I just loved it. We were so clean and crisp and the canes and the suits. And it was just so cool. Like, the choreo is so funky and... And it was the opening number, but it was so kind of chill. Yeah. You know? And I want to say, I think you, 
you was pretty oh, challenging. Oh God, so we, good. You know, we were on skateboards. Oh. <laughs> I was like in unitards. With oh my God. I mean, that was pretty challenging, um, but also just one of my faves as well. It was super cool. I'm not yeah. sure who wants to answer this and they can just put their little fingers up, but were you all dying because you were underdressed for the first three numbers? So there was like lots of layers of clothing going on. Were you all dying of heat? <laughs> we kept ripping off clothes. Um, <laughs> yes. I was wondering how we had hats on, Nick, when we had, I mean, T, you had short hair. Teresa, I feel like you had short yeah, hair. But... Sean had short hair, but Nick yeah. and I had these high ponies. Yeah. We, I was like, how did we even get that hat on? <laughs> figured it out. <laughs> but it would have had been sitting like way up there no wonder. <laughs> um kelly you mentioned a few moments ago about how cool you guys looked when you came out to velvet so i this brings me to uh costumes um and i know that there was uh parameters we're call, we'll call them when you guys were getting hired back on to come onto this tour about piercings and hair color funkiness and uh potential tattoos i know that happened to some of you uh so I'm going to start with Nikki. Uh, what did it feel like to, to be told like, Hey, you need to maybe do this. And, <laughs> and, and did you pick your uh, pink hair? Um, that was really hard for me because I was told that I needed to cut my hair and I had very long curly hair, as you know, um, pretty much my signature <laughs> hair. Um, so that was a really rough one for me, but ended up cutting it's shoulder length, I believe. <clears throat> we had a choice of piercing. Um, I think I went with the less painful one, which was the <laughs> eyebrow piercing that ended up getting infected over time because of all the makeup and, and sweating and, and eventually had to take it out. Um, and I think I did pick my hair color, pink, hot pink. Because I think everybody yes. has chosen. Sure pink. <laughs> yes, and I do have a funny story with you, Kel, on your piercing. Oh, oh let's hear this. You might let's know this one. When I took it out? Yes. <laughs> 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 I think you were sitting somewhere eating at a restaurant. She was drinking for a straw. And she had already, she had taken out her piercing and... <laughs> <laughs> I can I can literally squirt, her I can squirt liquid through the, the piercing. That was pretty funny. Wow. <laughs> I still have a scar up here somewhere from, from my piercing. <laughs> Teresa, um, what was it like for you to uh to go to Funky Land? Oh, I was down for whatever. You tell me I, I don't care. <laughs> I didn't care. It was like um whatever you want, I will do it. <laughs> Why do I feel like this wouldn't be allowed nowadays? <laughs> right. Get a piercing. Change your hair. Yeah, I don't think so. It was optional. It was just suggested. Did the guys have to do it or just the girls? No, we, did you yeah, I think I had the same piercing as you, Kelly, right? No. I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I liked it. Who, I mean, you know, I, I'm going to... It was like, I, I was told to do something that I probably wouldn't have ever done. So it was kind of cool that somebody else made the decision for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, could tell my mom, I could tell my mom and dad, I'm like, no, nah, I had to do it. <laughs> Did you guys uh, get to keep any of the costumes after the tour was done? No. I, don't think, I think some things we were allowed to take, right? Weren't we like some things? I think we got our all our throb stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're, we're keeping it just in case we end up going back on tour again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think mine fits anymore. <laughs> I don't think so. Mine wouldn't. <laughs> my black hair boots, though, from the other tour. Uh, we had a question from Carrie Jackson, and Carrie wanted to know um, about the Velvet Rope uh, photo shoot for the tour book. So was that a fun experience? And and do you remember? Because like the pictures are amazing, right? So uh, let's start with Tice. You're nodding your head. How cool was that to be in that photo shoot for the tour book? It was unreal. I mean, from beginning to end. I mean, it's it's you know for me it was like that was like my my dream to like that was the artist that I targeted. I I connected with what Janet did with what Tina was doing, and I 
just wanted to be part of anything. And so that photo shoot, I remember it was, I think I remember it was in like Culver City. Mm -hmm. You guys remember it? No? And um, it was incredible because when you work with Janet, it's like, I, you know, when they bring in the, the, the wardrobe, like the options for the wardrobe, it's like, oh, it's like, I think with Janet, it's like, here comes the wardrobe. Here's the stylist that we're using um, from what I saw. And it's like, do you like this? Because usually you don't get a, a choice, but what was so great in working with Janet and on the, on the Velvet Rope Tour was that, you know, <laughs> Tina, Tina and Janet wanted us to feel comfortable in what we were taking pictures in or dancing in. And then, and then you have a really great result like the Velvet Rope Tour. And so, you know, the photo shoot was unbelievable. And obviously, like you said, the pictures are incredible. So for me, it was like an out of body experience and from the whole thing. I was just like, it was like literally, I, I tried to hide it, but it was an out of body experience for me. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I just floated through the whole tour. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Kelly and Nikki, what did you uh, think about the photo shoot for the? Because this this would have been your second, right? Because you'd done the Janet tour book. So I don't. I mean, I don't remember specifically, but I do remember getting to each have our moment with Janet yeah. too, right? Mm -hmm. like, like we did our little Charlie's Angel pose and. <laughs> Yeah, like it was just fun. It was just like another family, a f like a family getting together to get their photos. I remember the band being there, you know, there, there, there was a vehicle, like, and it was really simple too, right? It wasn't a white, just white background. Like it was very simple. And um, we're just like rocking all our new looks. So we felt super mm. cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nick cool. is nodding her head. Nick, what did you think of that photo shoot? I mean, I think, I mean, I don't quite remember the photo shoot itself, but on any, I think that any experience and any opportunity that we had to do anything with everyone, it, it was, it was just like a dream come true. You know, we probably didn't realize it why we were in it. Um, but to be part of such a, the kids, you know, with, with, with Janet was a, such a big deal. And, and um, I think at that time, it was just nice to be a part of that. Um, and, and the results that we got with, with all of those pictures and we still have them to this day. I mean, it's so special. Um, mm -hmm. and it just brings back a lot of memories and, uh, um, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just a special moment. Every, every everything that we did was always great. She, Janet was always great and just made us all feel amazing. Hey, <laughs> Kelly, can I, can, uh, can, ahead, can I, can I uh, before I go, can I do two things? One is, if you guys can see this, because it might be blurry, but wait a minute, I want to show you guys, can you guys see this? I, it's a little blurry. Wait, I gotta, okay, wait, I'm, I'm so bad at, I'm messing this up. Okay, hold on, just a second. Let me do this, hold on. It's an award. Undo that. that. Okay, yeah. wait, wait. So first oh. I wanna show you guys, this is the Rock Hall trophy. Yes. So I wanna share this with everybody because you guys are a big part of this happening. I just want you to know that. So everybody, I wanna share that. And then last thing is, I texted Janet and I let her know I was on the live stream. And I said, we're on a live stream celebrating a Velvet Rope. And she said, how awesome, please give them all my love. Yay. So anyway, I just wanted to end up, and I'm gonna jump off, but didn't wanna interrupt, but just wanted to let you guys know. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Love you guys. Thanks, Jimmy. Bye. Bye. Um, in the uh, the tour book, there was obviously the picture of, of you guys, the dancers, and then there was pictures of the band. This brings me to a question of, is there, like, how cool were you guys, you know, because you were two units, but you were one unit when you're on stage. So was there a good synergy between dancers and band? Oh, yes. Yeah. I think Tice, I'll... Tice is nodding quite a bit. Tice, go. Oh, Kelly, go ahead. You were going to say something, Kelly, go. No, I mean, I, I think I was just going to say, like, they all felt like like my older brothers, like, the, you know, like Daryl and Sam, it, like, these are people that we toured with uh, before. So um, it was just like getting the old family back together for that was my experience of it. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think we had a pretty good vibe with them. Right? Wouldn't you guys say? <laughs> yeah. I think one thing that happens when you do have such a great um, synergy with band and dancers is that we have ultimate respect for each other, right? So they're watching th- what they're playing come to life. And we're hearing what we're dancing to live. Like the, the floor is vibrating. The drums are like piercing through us. So it's really like we're all feeding off of each other because it's a give and take back and forth. It's a constant give and take from the time you enter the stage until the time you get off. So any other thing that we're doing, whether it's a photo shoot or, or a party we're going to, like there's just this, this common thread of respect and um, admiration, I think, for what we all bring to the party. Mm-hmm. I want to. I'd like to add about the band that when we, they would do sound check, uh, Rob, Mike, and I, and you know everybody else would occasionally join sound check, and they would play whatever song sometimes and just jam, mm-hmm. and we'd go over there and freestyle with them. So we were always, you, you know, connected even when we weren't performing. And I, I think again that leads to us having really created magic on stage because everybody was so interconnected um, just artistically and personally. And it's just, that's what fueled, I think, the specialness of a bell rope. Yeah. Uh, just before we lay off to the next question, I did want to mention that Tina and I uh, have a show together now called Just Dance with, <laughs> with Kelly and Tina. And uh, we uh, recently interviewed uh, musical director Rex Salas. So if you would like to see uh, what he has to say about the 25th anniversary of Velvet Rope, please uh, hit up our website for that hy.page slash Kelly Alexander show. And uh, it was so amazing because Tina and Rex hadn't seen each other in about 20 years. So Mm -hmm. to see them reconnect was like epic. And to hear the musical side of things from what it was like to put the tour together on that side was like awesome. So uh, we Mm -hmm. definitely invite you to to check that out. I also wanted to mention too, before we hit up to the next question, um, Mike Andrews, it's been five years since he passed away. And we just want to make sure that we're dedicating this live stream to him tonight in his honor, because I know he would be here with bells on if he could be. And I'm sure he's with us in spirit. Um, I want to start with Kelly. Can you uh, say a few words on Mike and what it was like to dance with him? Yeah, of course. I was just talking about him today to my man on the beach. We were just looking out and I was just like, you know, Mike's not going to be there. But I said he was such a gentle, like I just remember him from my experience of of Mike is he was just gentle, kind, sweet. He always just was nice to me. <laughs> that's That's all I, you know, and then he was like super cool and and talented and um yeah and, it, and he was kind of like when he joined us it was kind of like oh he's diff-, you know he's different than what I thought Tina would would go for like it was a little bit you know who is this guy but um he yeah he just kind of fit right in and and I loved him and I miss him <laughs> Rob can you are. speak to uh can you speak to us about Mike because he was your bookend and I know you guys were buddies yeah uh actually we grew up in the same neighborhood too so his family knew my family. We all knew each other. So, uh, yeah, well, Mike, uh, yeah, I still consider my little brother. Um, uh, I was so glad that he got the gig. Um, but, you know, I was with Mike up to his last days. Uh, so, I'm, uh, like, actually, I talked to him a week before and encouraged him to do uh, what he has to do. But, fortunately, uh, the symptoms have taken over his body. Um, but, you know, answer with Mike, I love, you know, you know, always going to be my favorite when we do drop together because I was like, toward the end was always the hard part. You know, we're doing like all these numbers and we're tired. But sure, I thought we was going to collapse at one of those freestyle sections doing those kickups. But uh, no, that's what Mike was amazing. It was great. I, I you know, I love that little guy. He was just, he was just full of life. You know, uh, you should know that. You know, I probably wouldn't be doing these interviews because of Mike, because I had no idea or any concept. I, I am not a professional person who likes to do interviews. I am not that character. So, but Mike did encourage me and influence me to understand why it's important to do these things. So yeah, I get love to Mike uh, based on that. And then uh, and so happy to be here to help represent him too here in this moment. Tice, can you speak to us about Mike? 
Yeah, my, Michael had a really pure spirit and he, he was um, very, very gifted in terms of like his body and, and understanding music and being on stage with all of us together. Like I learned so much and I know we all did, you know, from watching each other, but like, you know, me and uh, Michael and Rob and Gil, like, the, us four guys together on stage, you know, we're, we're so different, but yet we had this, this synergy and this like, you know, connection obviously for the project, but um, Michael really had such a gift for, and his ear for music and style and his freestyle. And he just, he, and he was very, <laughs> he had a very quick wit about him. And, <laughs> you know, he, he had such a personality. I mean, you know, we, all of us, we, you know, we, we had strong personalities and that, that's what I think made the Velvet Rope so special, you know, and um, yeah, but Michael, you know, I think, I believe Michael was the youngest, wasn't he? So he had this like, like this angelic quality, like he was, this, he was the youngest, you yeah. know? So, but he, everything that, that you could see everything through Michael's eyes, you know? Like he, he, he took everything in and he had a really great spirit about him that he brought to the velvet rope that was important, you know? Mm -hmm. Teresa, so. can you share some thoughts on Michael, please? Yeah, I, I, I agree with everybody, you know, and that he just was a really kind person. He was mm -hmm. very sweet and gentle, but then you get on stage, he got on stage and just killed it. He would kill it. And rock the stage and uh, after he passed it was funny i was i was at i was at trader joe's and a janet song came on and i just felt like he was speaking to me it was yeah. the strangest moment because i had connected with him um a little bit prior to before he passed and we had a special moment and then you know afterwards so i felt like he came and visited me specifically mm -hmm. through a Janet song. And I was like, I hear you. Thank you. You know, he just was sweet. He was just very sweet. Nikki. Um, everybody said so many nice things. I mean, I agree with everyone. He was so kind all the time. He, he, he brought sm a smile to my face. He, he would make us laugh. Mm -hmm. um, he was just this light and um, almost kind of childlike um, in a good way. And um, it was just always, it was always comforting to be around and warm. <clears throat> I should mention um, Gil and Seanette could not be with us tonight, uh, but Seanette wanted to uh, leave a surprise for people. So earlier this week, Tina and I recorded an interview with Seanette. <laughs> so, uh, so surprise for all the fans and we're doing this on Christmas. So on December 25th, uh, you'll see a brand new interview with Tina, myself and Seanette. Uh, celebrating the velvet rope and and her career dancing with with Tina and Janet. So uh, you can definitely check that out on Just Dance. Again, that drops on the 25th of December. And of course, Seanette, um sends her love, which is super cool. Um, we have a question. For, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Kim, who is watching from St. Louis. And she uh, is celebrating a birthday. Tina, go. Yeah, I just wanted because I didn't get asked this to talk about Mike. But my... But I agree, every, the, the things that everyone says is that he was a gentle soul, but my memory of Michael is, will you pull up your damn pants? Pull up your pants. <laughs> see your boxers. See your boxers. <laughs> Funny look in his face, like, oh my God, like a, But I remember Mike, wherever he's going, he's got his hands grabbing from the knees up. So that is my <laughs> Do something. <laughs> um, so we have a question from Terry. I'm not sure where she's from, but she wanted to know if there were any major mishaps uh, whilst on tour, like on stage. Did anybody fall off the stage? Did anybody knock themselves unconscious? Uh, did uh, oh, Tyson Pony? Is that Tina or? <laughs> Big one. There's a lot. Um. Yeah. What do you remember, um, unless you want to tell the story, Rob, when you got hurt during the the whimsical? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I remember coming out, and I remember I was stretching with Gil, Tice. Tice would give me some techniques because I really wanted to extend my leg 
high. And because all three guys label like straight a, a pencil and mine's like half, you know, anyway. Um, so I was, I was stretching. I was really into it. And then I just went, went for it and then ripped my knee. And then I went down and it didn't help because I kept dancing on it because I was like, I'm not going to give up. And then next, you know, I'm <laughs> dancing, doing a routine, sliding with one leg off to the side. And then I can see Tina from the side of my eye. She's looking like, he ain't coming back. <laughs> he yeah. ain't coming back. <laughs> it was during the whimsical. So we had all those crazy costumes. And you know, even though it looked like we didn't know what we were doing, everything was pretty mapped out. And Rob had that funny be uh, beak thing. Beak, yeah. And it's so whiz. all of a sudden he's out there. We're all dancing, doing our thing. And all of a sudden I'm like, where did Rob go? Okay. <laughs> You came untied you know sometimes you got to run off and fix something and he didn't come back so in a break i darted and here he was with the therapist laying on his back his leg up and yeah. then that's when people don't understand what a swing does it's like teresa rob is out he's not coming back in the show go get in all your costumes and she has a plot of where everybody goes and it's not like oh teresa's a swing and she knows exactly what's going to happen each show um so she literally was from that point on had to figure out the rest of the show and do all of rob's sections for that so that's just that's one of many mishaps <laughs> teresa can you actually speak to us about being swing dancer and it's like a situation yes. like that like how challenging was that to wrap your head around like oh i'm in let's go yeah so the first time i felt like the pressure was really really on for me was rhythm nation and i had to fill in for gill which at that point, for some reason, I wasn't really paying attention to the guys formations as much because during the rehearsal process, I was always filling in for Tina so she could watch. So I was mostly paying attention to them. And then here comes Gil and he, I think he got sick or, or hurt or something. And, I, and in the last minute, I had to fill in for uh, Rhythm Nation. And there's, you know, this, the formations are very specific. You know, they're very linear and very specific. And the opposite was Tice. And even though I knew I didn't know the exact formations, I was like, yes, put me in, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. And there's a part in Rhythm Nation where Janet does uh, a moment and then two people go and then new, other two people go and then more people go. And they each have a section with Janet and she does like uh, these eight counts. Well, I knew there was two eight counts. I didn't know any of the choreography, but I didn't <laughs> care. I was like. I'm going on stage. And <laughs> what I remember is when that part came for, for us to do uh, the two eights that I knew I didn't know any of the choreography. Uh, I remember Tina vividly, right? Like right here in my peripheral and she was facing back and I'm behind her, but I'm looking at the audience and she's like, just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Acting up choreography, like pretend uh, rhythm nation choreography. It was insane. But but yeah, so I I just would go. They just threw me in and it whatever happened, happened, and it was okay. You know, it wasn't the end of the world. At that time there weren't a lot of cameras, so if you messed up, right. Whoever was there, <laughs> you know, but nowadays it's a little different story, but you're so brave, man. That would be my worst nightmare, not knowing where to go on stage. Oh, I, I went like a whole eight doing this part. A whole eight the wrong direction. And when all else fails, just go like that. <laughs> I remember I just walk around the stage going like this. I don't remember if it was that same number, Teresa, but I remember it was we were it was like uh da -da 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 -da, we were all frozen. We're all present. Here goes Teresa. Run, run, run. I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> Just freeze. Stop. Like, literally, the whole stage is frozen. Teresa's like, oh, I'm supposed to be over here. <laughs> <laughs> that was right before the nunchucks, I think. And it goes pitch dark. And so by the time I got to my spot, the lights went off before nunchucks. So I could have waited like just three seconds more, but I was so like, I know I'm for sure in the wrong spot. And I was just excited that I did it anyway. And then I was like, oh man, I wish I would have had the brain to like think of those things at the moment. Uh, before we move, on, we move on, this is pretty cool. And I think all of you on screen here will be very excited. A big shout out to one of your uh, Velvet Rope tour people, uh, Daryl Smith. From oh! the is watching right now. So Daryl, thank you so much for tuning in Daryl's and big hello from everyone, that is for sure. 
And uh, we also have a shout out, by the way, to um, Shanice Wilson, R&B star. I'm not sure if she's in the room right now, but she sent us um, a little like uh, earlier, so which is amazing. Oh, so we will cool. take that for sure. Um, Teresa, you brought up Numchuck, so I want to start with Tina on this. Uh, tell us how the idea for Numchucks happened, and then I want everybody <laughs> else to tell us uh, how much they enjoyed or did not enjoy learning martial arts weapons. So, mm-hmm. Tina, go. Um, I love props. I will use props at any given moment. And, you know, anyone who knows me knows I've always loved martial arts. Um, I could just never afford to get hurt. So I would only go, you know, I would only go so hard in class if I would was taking a class. We ended up, me, Kelly, and Nikki were always at Tybo. That was as close as I could get without anybody. Um, but I just, I was enamored with nunchucks and weapons and things like that. Like I, even the staff I wanted to use at one point. Um, and I knew Janet was going to give me some kickback on it because anything and everything can go wrong when you're using those and learning. But um, didn't I bring in Terry, Terry help? Cause I only knew a few things. And uh, uh, Terry Bixler came in because he also is a martial arts fa- fan and knew some tricks that I didn't know. So he helped me choreograph that. But I just wanted to, you know, again, it was my third tour. I'm like, uh, what can I do different? You know, this is, you got to keep Anthony's choreography the same. The only thing I would do is cut it up um, for, for staging purposes. But it's like, how do you make this different for the fans? And so that was, yeah, that was my idea. And Mm. Do it. <laughs> uh, Tyson, what did you think about martial arts weapons? I mean, it was new for me, but I, you know, I mean, anything Tina threw at us, we were just, we, you throw yourself in. That's what we do as, as artists. You just throw yourself in and you, um, you take it on. But it was, it was, it was like at moments we would be like, oh, am I going to hit myself in the head with this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I think maybe some of us might have, but, you know, but, it looked so effective and great and it was so unique and, you know, creatively Tina, like, you know, from, from, you know, all the numbers, just creative direction wise, I mean, was just so, I feel like it was so ahead of its time. Cause like in all of, and all of those concepts and ideas are still good. If you, if you put them on a stage now, they were ahead of it, of, of the time and they're still great, you know? So it was, so like, especially, that was like a breakdown section, right, Tina? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Still to was, this day, I don't think anybody else has ever done that before. I've never seen anything. I've like never that. seen it before, but yeah. I loved it. I felt like a badass. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I loved everything about the the um, that tours. Um, oh my god, what am I trying to say? Rhythm Nation. Because yeah. I loved the costumes. I loved those the hats that we yeah. had, the big yeah. boots, the jackets. I mean, the fact that we actually did Rhythm Nation in, in that getup, like yeah. with, remember? Like that, that was a, a lot of clothing. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to jump through the-, the Oh yeah. The- Thank God we never <laughs> fell on our face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I let mine go a couple times throughout the tour, but. <laughs> he, uh, we've had a question come in from magic mike 41 and he wants to know so this is a question specifically for nikki and kelly um, and tina uh to the people from the janet tour how was the velvet rope tour different from being on that 93 to 95 tour like what sticks out to you nikki oh gosh um well i i feel like um from a mature point of view i mean i think the first tour for me was kind of just like, oh, let's go shopping. <laughs> let's go to every mall. Let you know. <laughs> um, the second time around, we we're like, okay, maybe we should save some money. Um, <laughs> I do remember that. Um, but I think also um, we had uh, such a different group of people that came in as well. And um, I feel because half of us came onto the second. Um, tour there was a we were a bit tighter and we knew each other better and you know I know Kelly and I were living with Tina prior and so we just you know it was it was I don't know they're both both tours were very they were both great but I think um, my favorite is is Velvet Rope with these with these guys. Kel? 
yeah, I think it's hard to say which one was better or what, you know, what, because it was a different, it was a different experience. Like it was our second tour. It wasn't the first, you know, um, but I do, re I just remember it knowing that I was a part of something really special on this one. Like it was just a different type of show with it being more, you know, theatrical and it was just a different vibe than the first one. Like I was just excited to be a part of it. You know what I mean? And, and it was just pretty to look at and the colors and the richness of it. So um, yeah, I, I, that's, that's all I have to say. I, I mean, I loved both of them. I, I loved the new group of people. I missed the old group of people, but you know, half of us were still the same. So it was, it was cool all around. <laughs> he, what I know that Velvet Rope is your baby. So what's, what's the big difference between Janet and Velvet? Is it, is it that it was your baby? Uh, yeah, it was that it was my baby. Like I just, um, and I also think, you know, again, on the maturity level, it being my third tour, I understood, okay, what I needed as a boss, so to speak, to, to bring everyone together, to kind of stop things in their tracks. If, you know, like, Hey, let's have a meeting. If, if I'm, everyone's energy is off a little bit or, or Hey, let's time for prayer. How important is prayer before the show? And, um, but I also think that for me, I, especially bringing the girls back, I knew I, I kind of like I had my group, right? My people I could count on. I knew what I was going to get from them. And again, it being my third tour, I also knew what I was going to get from Tice and, and Gil and what I was going to get from Rob and Teresa and Mike. I kind of felt like I, I was um, better at maneuvering and figuring out how to use people at their at their highest capacity for each number right so that it not just it didn't just highlight the individual but it it lifted the the entire number when you're using people the right way um so that's a, on a technical term and i just think also you know learning that stuff about like at that point we're like yeah maybe we shouldn't spend all of our money at Dolce & Gabbana. Like if we're going to a, a, a what do you call it? A out, what do you call it? Out. Outlet, um, the outlets. Outlets. <laughs> it's still $55 for a tank top, not buying. Like, I would pay my per diem and, you know. So I think you learn little things like that. Um, and I think you also learn, okay, I'm not in a mood to be around people. I'm going to go in my bunk. I'm going to go in that room. I'm going to go. And you start to also learn, like, when you are in a group of people, how best to kind of bring the best of yourself to everyone and also for yourself, for your sanity. Because I was spinning a lot of hats, right? Like, you know, we talked about this, I think, when I was, when we were talking with Seanette. It's like when we were in rehearsal, you know, I've got my choreographer hat on, my director hat on, my boss hat on, right? When we go home and I'm with Kelly and Nikki, it's like that hat comes off. Or when we're just hanging out, having lunch, unless we're talking, you know, specifics about the show, it's like now we're friends and it's kind of the same thing with Janet. It's like I'm talking to you now as a friend or as your choreographer. So those lines um, started to kind of get a little clearer, I think, as time went on. And I think that's kind of for all of us, right? We all kind of learn those lines and learn how to respect each other. Yes. We got a question from YR382, wanting to know if there was uh, specific dietary things going on during the tour or were there free for all? Were you eating whatever the heck you wanted to do? <laughs> that was probably the time we could eat anything we wanted because we were dancing every day. <laughs> we're paying I for it now. Yeah. But <laughs> I remember that honey stuff we had to take every show. Royal jelly or something? Royal oh, jelly. Yeah. We spooned it at before on stage. <laughs> that was the I only know. thing. <laughs> um, we also got a question. Um, did Michael Jackson ever show up to a Velvet Rope concert? Not that I can remember. Maybe he was there incognito, but he, he could have been in disguise. Maybe. <laughs> also true. Um, 
a bunch of fans from different places actually have the same, very same question, wanting to know if there were different cities that stood out to you while you were on tour. Cause I'm, I'm assuming everybody hopes like Chicago was the coolest or Los Angeles or Montreal, but uh, <laughs> does that, uh, I'll start with Cal. It was it like, was bank, was it Vancouver for you because of being at home? Yeah. Anytime we were in Canada, I was loving life because <laughs> I got the biggest holla when we were in <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding. No, but I mean, there's so many places that I want to, you know, that I would actually now spend my own money to go back to. <laughs> I, I, that's how I equate things. I'm like, where would I spend my own money? Because, you know, we got paid to travel. We didn't have to pay for anything. It was like incredible. But to go back to certain places, I would probably want to revisit Cape Town and New Zealand stands out to me, but it also reminds me of home. So um, yeah, I mean, I loved any any show in Vancouver though, was, was, that was the best. And when we got to rehearse in Vancouver for one of the tours, it was just like, what? That was for all for you though. But yeah, Velvet Rope, that, that was, but I don't even know, know if Velvet Rope came to Vancouver, to be honest. I so, thought we, we did. I, wasn't it was going like crazy no, or no, something? No. We must have. We must have because yeah. I remember having like a hundred guests in the audience. Yeah. We did Brunei. <laughs> you brought your family. I think your family was there. Oh yeah, no, everybody was there, man. Everybody. <laughs> but yeah, no, Brunei. That Brunei, <laughs> right, Nick? That was a that was a private Velvet performance, Rope. was it not? Yes. Uh, that was on Velvet Rope. We all went to Brunei together. Yeah. Wow. That was interesting. That was we got, we, on the plane ride. We got a hand a, a, a sheet that said all the things we're allowed to do and not do. Like yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some cultural things that we we're supposed to abide by. That was so cool. Wasn't the, yeah. the show was short, right? The, they what? the short. The show was shorter because some of the numbers wasn't uh, <laughs> appropriate. Wasn't, uh, accepted. Well, we did it for a sit down dinner. Remember. <laughs> Yeah. It, yeah. it was a yeah. birthday for the princess. Yeah. She had like sketchers on with diamonds on them or something. <laughs> and the, she had like seven cakes. I remember everything, by the way, because <laughs> this her, her birthday was like a month away already. She was celebrating her birthday for a whole month already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, that's actually a good thing you guys brought up. So obviously being on tour for so long, uh, birthdays would come and go. Did you did you all get to celebrate? Did Janet get you a cake? How did that work? Kelly's nodding. Go, Kel. <laughs> I, mean, I, I remember always having birthday parties and always Janet spoiling all of us for our birthdays. Many a times <laughs> over. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I remember getting a, a Prada backpack from her as a gift. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Oh. Didn't we get that too? Our Cartier watches. Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw that one. Um, we had a question from Michael Jefferson who wants to know if on any of the tour dates, uh, Kelly and Nikki had to stand in for Tina and Sean on Roper. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I I don't think I could have done it. I was I was too much of a good girl back then. Well, <laughs> I did, and it did not go well. Oh, oh you did? <laughs> Nick, tell us this story. Right. What happened there? I just remember, okay, I had to stand in for Seanette. She was sick. Um, and I remember learning all the choreography, and I was great up until the part where you have to hold yourself up on the pole of the chair. And you're supposed to hold yourself with your legs out, and then I just went to pull myself up and I just went <laughs> down to the chair. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was an embarrassing moment. I think Tina was holding hers and oh, I <laughs> very slowly. Um, yeah, that was the last time and only time I think I had to stand in for Sean. <laughs> Yeah, Sean, I'm not allowed to be sick anymore. But they both learned it, right? Because they were both of our. But I don't think you guys ever actually rehearse it, even in your mind. After they're just like, "Yeah, we're never gonna do that. They're never. They're never gonna need us." <laughs> yeah. well, I think Nikki was probably still learning it like the night before. <laughs> <laughs> done it in months. Teresa, yeah, did you have to learn it? Is no joke. <laughs> Teresa, did you have to learn it? No. Okay. I, 
I was too much of a tomboy at that. I mean, I'm still a tomboy, but I think I just wasn't, I didn't fit the part to be honest. And it <laughs> would be better that they were the ones to go to. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Tice on this question. Tice, um, what do you have, like, what is your favorite part of the Velvet Rope concert? Like, you know, obviously you're in so much of it, especially with the sax part was fun when you got to do that little intro. Um, but what's your favorite section? Like, was there a favorite section for, for Tice? Oh man. Um, I mean, that's a hard question, you know, cause it's like, I mean, you can talk about like throb. I mean, that comes to mind cause that's like such a, a release. It's such a release. It's such an incredible song. It, it, it allows all of us to, to be uh, individuals in that. And then, you know, on the flip side of that, I do love, I do love um, the uh, uh, All Right, you know, mm -hmm. number. Because it was like, it was so uh, theatrical. It was very like, very much like theater, you know, and like, like real jazz and like, and we, and just, and how it unfolded and it kept like, you know, from, from the opening to the, you know, and then we had the <laughs> instruments and things like that. So that was so great. And, and you know, what's funny, what brings that up to me is that there's a, um, a friend of mine who's, who's a dancer who, um, who I've hired before. And we were doing a session like maybe a couple of months ago with a, a few dancers and where we just like bring music. So we're just in this in the studio and my friend puts on this song and literally <laughs> he's playing it and I'm going, what, what is this? <laughs> Why do I know this? And he's like, Tice, he goes, think about it. And I'm like, what, what, this is, I go, oh my God, I know this. And it's like, da 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 And I'm like, wait a minute, so why did you bring this song? He goes, oh my God, he's like, Tice, this section. And I'm like, that's awesome. It literally blew my mind. And I'm like, so see Tina, like. <laughs> I love that. Like, it was so great. It's so awesome. And all the musicality in that was just fantastic. And the choreography was like. I love us pretending, pretending we're playing the horn. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean pretending? We play for real. <laughs> uh, Nikki, what was your favorite part of the show? Oh, um, uh, well, actually, I definitely loved the, the, um, <clears throat> the that was a favorite of mine, um, the beginning of the show. And mm -hmm. I think um, I get lonely. Mm -hmm. It was fun to, to perform. Teresa, favorite, favorite section for you? Well, my shows were different every show because some days I was in it more, some days I wasn't in it as much. And so I got to really watch a lot of the shows. And part of my favorite part to watch was Throb. Whenever I, because I could watch people individually and sit on the side and I was so close to the stage that, and I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm coming from a fan perspective. So I was always constantly fanning on everybody and the way that Tice would kick his leg and then drop it really slow <laughs> and the way Seanette would just, ugh, it just everybody had so many great things to like watch and learn from. So for me as a fan, and I was still a student, you know, and I just taking observing, but it's hard to really say um, if I ever got the chance Can to I do it. For you, Teresa. Um, what? Me. I enjoyed watching you kill it every night in the bows. Oh. That was your time to shine, and you absolutely killed it every night. Oh, thank so you. I was like, God, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I will accept that. <laughs> Rob, what was your favorite uh, section of the show? Um, <clears throat> when we got to do the Mentley uh, Nasty Boys. Yeah. Just because uh, I used to watch that video a lot. And then when I heard that we're doing Nasty Boys, <laughs> I was so I was pretty happy with that. And of course, uh, the song that Tice brought up, all right. I just love the whole characteristic, the big zoot suits, and uh, I get to, I got to jump high and then run around with those fake jewelry and those briefcase. It was like, <laughs> I was like a real fun number. Yeah. It wasn't really like dance. It was like uh, for, like same thing. Uh, character. It was very characteristic, and I love having that moment but nasty boys 
and that mentally part was the best. Kelly, what about you? I mean, I love I love that section too, even though I wasn't in it. <laughs> that honestly was one of my favorite parts of the show was that whole medley. Uh, yeah, again, the opening and then to, together again was fun. It was it was like probably also because we we're it was near the end, I think. <laughs> And I was probably thinking about what I was going to eat on the bus later on. <laughs> but no, Together Again was always just very, you know, the odd. And just seeing the whole crowd jump in at, at, at that point. So um, that was awesome. Hey, I know this was your baby, but was there, is, can you like let a secret out? Is there like a favorite song, like a favorite section? Um, No, I mean, it just like all of it. I just loved all of it. But there was something that was so magical every single night, standing there, waiting, hearing the crowd, and just waiting for ba da 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 da. And you're like, ah, like inside, you're just like fanning out yourself, like screaming, hearing the song come to life, knowing that the fans are now going to get this two hour nonstop show mm -hmm. was it's kind of like when you have a present and you're giving it to someone and you're like, you can't wait for them to open it. Yeah. That's kind of what the show felt like for me from the beginning to the end. And I think uh, it's, 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 sorry, go, 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 go. just to go on top of that too, just because we all felt so confident, you know what I mean? We were so confident with what we were going to about to go do. Be, you know, because of you and because of everybody on the camp that created this masterpiece of a show. Like, I mean, it was a masterpiece, T. Like, T, you need to know. I, yeah. like, yes. I just watch it. And, it. and we were so polished. Like, it was just so tight. And it was just felt right. And it felt good. So, like, how could we not just be, like, so ready to, like, you know, go out the, on the stage and murder it? <laughs> <laughs> their faces off I mean everybody on that stage was there for a reason and everybody worked equally mm -hmm. hard and I obviously it showed and it mm -hmm. I, and I will say this from a, a choreographer's point of view it's like I had all the right people to make that show what it was because if you it doesn't matter how good your choreography is or how good you think it is if you don't have the right dancers to pull it off mm -hmm. it will ever come out the way that you're feeling it or seeing it so you know we were all we all did this together all of us thank you Tina. yeah but there's somebody up at the top <laughs> like this. i don't know where i'm at <laughs> uh, i have an energy question for you guys so uh when you're at like show number 55 and you're in middle america and you've done this already uh, how do you keep the energy up? Or was it just like, like, did, was there a pep talk during prayer circle? Like, or did you just know you weren't going to let Janet down? Like, how did this roll? Um, Kel, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think it was just, I think it, it was Janet, you know, watching what she would do every night. If there was just, you know, of course there's those shows where the audience was a little dead or we felt that it, they, they might've been a little quiet, but um, yeah, I think just making sure that we're doing our gig, doing our job, what we're hired to do, and 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 we give each other energy on stage. You know what I mean? I think that's when you look to your fellow dancer. And you might want to do some, you know, silly things throughout the show just to keep it fun and exciting. I, I think. Uh, sorry, Tice. Do you, have, do you have anything about energy levels? I I, I mean. Yeah, like you said, Kelly, it's like, you know, we were on stage with Janet. So it's like, I think everything else took a back seat because, you know, it's like Janet Jackson, the Velvet Rope tour. I mean, you know, you talk to you talk to dancers today and people, just artists today, and they and they reference the Velvet Rope tour as something completely symbolic in their in their um, artistic lives. So that's like such a testament to Tina because yeah a few things because it's so loaded the velvet rope it's so loaded with so many things so let me just say that you know as you were talking about um energy and um and Tina choreography so when you were talking about the numbers literally if you think about it <laughs> each and every number honestly in truth this is this is factual 
each number is a complete, not only is Velvet Rope a masterful album, tour and all those things, but the choreography, Tina's choreography in each and every number is at such a high level that it's, it's completely unforgettable. And we're also stumped to pick which one because it is that good and it felt that good. And I, don't, I, I you know, I, we've all been around dancers and things like that. And it's like, and we've done so many things and, you know, had so many experiences in our lives. But, but if you, you know, talk to each and every person, even the band, you know, it's like, it's not something that'll ever uh, quite energetically, it doesn't happen all the time like this. It right. doesn't happen. So it's like, I feel, I feel so lucky. I'm sure everybody else feels really lucky to have, to have shared this moment. And, it's, and I'm sure the fans too, the fans too, they felt it too. You know, it was like, they felt a part of it. So energetically, uh, you know, it's like, again, from the first thing you asked me, it's otherworldly, really. <laughs> Totally. It is to me. Yeah. I, I, I really, I mean that. I mean that very sincerely, you know, so. As a group, what did it feel like? So I know Tina just kind of mentioned before, you know, when, when the curtain's about to go up and you guys are about to come out, when you guys come out and you do Velvet Rope and then like <laughs> the crowd is going bananas. And I know that a little bit later after if Janet sort of takes that break where, she, where you guys are running backstage to get changed and all that sort of stuff. So I know you're not there watching that part of it but it's the same idea. Like she's taking that in and, and in the DVD, like you see a tear going down Janet's face because I can't even imagine the amount of energy and love she's taking on by herself because you guys aren't there. But when you're doing Velvet, when you're all out as a team and that's coming at you from every city, New York, Montreal, Vancouver, like doesn't matter, Paris, whatever. What does that feel like for you, this wave coming at you? Because I can't even imagine. Tina, we'll start with you. <laughs> It's really hard to explain. You know what it's like? Not that everyone has seen this because I'm probably dating myself, but that Memorex commercial, right? Where the guy's sitting and then there's like, and it's like, and it's like, and the hair goes back and the commercial's like, is it Memorex or is it live? And it was kind of like that for us. It was, again, it was like that whole picture that I keep seeing is a present. It's like when you, you feel like you got the best present for someone and you you just can't wait to give it to them and you can't wait for them to open it because you know that it's something that they've always wanted, right? So, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, we have a million things going on in our brains, like whether we're tired or we didn't sleep that night or we're getting a cold or our costumes fit a little tight this, you know, this week there's just a lot of stuff that goes on but it's it's like this constant wave of love that you get from the audience that just makes everything it like really like what Tyson was saying it's otherworldly or just it's almost like a right like where you're just you're some nights you're going through the motions but you you are out of your body because because of the energy that's out there Nikki what did it feel like for you um it's, it, it was such an adrenaline rush <clears throat> for me personally, I had a bucket <laughs> in, the, in my dressing room <laughs> to go from zero to 150. And I mean, we were out there for what, three long numbers. Um, when you run backstage to finally change, and you have that break. For me, it was always, you know, probably a little bit too much information, but for me, I needed the bucket. Cause I had to like, let it out. Um, I'd be but, like, Oh God. Every Exactly. It was just a huge adrenaline rush. Um, and you know, you just want to give your all as soon as you see this crowd and you know, their excitement, you just give everything you have. And then once you're able to take that break, it was, for me, it was kind of, I needed mm -hmm. to, that tell mm -hmm. what was it like for you feeling the wave I loved I loved looking into the audience like I think there's some performers that just you know they they, they just look at, at above or but like I, I would always look for my guests or like <laughs> <laughs> it was just cool you know like just to, to be able to pick people out like and, and and really I mean when going back to the energy too I I it was the fans, really. I mean, 
you yeah. look out and they're just singing their hearts out. They're having the best night of their life. Like, it, like how could that not affect you? You know what I mean? And give and fill you with with energy and and to play around with them and the and the and how excited they get if you waved at them. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm not even Janet. And, you know, so it was it was super cool. And I think those yeah, the nights that we needed it, a little that little extra boost of energy. You just you know connect with connect with the people out in the audience. Teresa. Well, I, I mean, I don't remember being tired. <laughs> I'm, I probably was at some point, but I just was so damn hungry. I just wanted to be there. That, um, But to the fan point, you know, there's fans that I connected with from day one when we went to Rotterdam was our first city uh, where we had two weeks of production rehearsals there. That's where we started. And I'm still friends with these people. You know, I am still connected to them through social media and I've seen them. I've seen a couple here in L.A. when they come. And it's just incredible. The fans that have stuck with us, you know, not just Janet, but with us, you know, personally, um, so that that always gave us a lot to know that we are connecting with actual people that we they would follow us like every city. You know, we're like, oh, hey, you know, it just is it's like a community, its own community. Rob, you had not only the wave with Velvet Rope, but then when you were the last guy off stage for Throb and you got a wave of energy, that is for sure from the fans. So what did that feel like? I'm sure you were exhausted <laughs> by the freestyling, but what was that like? <clears throat> well, freestyle is my thing. I love freestyling. So I don't think I can never be tired, but uh, there was a nigga, uh, what was it? Tina did say something. She said, that's up to you. After you freestyle the second time, it's up to you if you want to come and finish the number at the end you know, and I will push myself to come back at the end because I didn't want to feel like uh, I just came for the freestyle, you know, but I was tired. I was winded. And that's why I think it was way far stage, right? Because I can hide behind the curtain if I need to, or take a breath of the oxygen tank <laughs> if, it had to, if it was necessary. But uh, that energy level up to that, from the beginning of the show, all the way to the ending of uh, Throb, my brain was on process of uh, overdrive, you know, and most of the time is what I did before the numbers, like Teresa said. I will spend a lot of time outside of the stadium with fans or with people who's coming to the concert. I try to act normal, but uh, they know who you are. So uh, I would dance with people that had like the, uh, vendors out there with uh, radio stations. So I would dance out there, freestyle a little bit just to get that energy and just to remind me. And then I remember. At one time, I think Tina did say something where like, you gotta remember the person who in the 80th, 9th or the 100th row, they have to feel that energy back there. So I always had to pro I project that energy as much as I can because the person way in the back who I can't see will remember how hard we went and that we looked a lot of energy because we look like little ants to them, you know? But uh, that was the main, main thing. Mm -hmm. Um, because we've just briefly spoken about Throb, I have to bring it to Throb because, uh, you know, Janet does it pretty much on every tour. I know that Nikki and Kel and Sean, uh, or, and, and Tina had, had Throb on the Janet tour, uh, extra special, I think on Velvet Rope tour. Um, I know we had some questions come in from the fans asking for Kelly and Nikki and Tina to talk about, uh, why you didn't really want to really go freestyle on Throb. <laughs> Cause I think most of your stuff was choreographed, right? Your freestyle was choreographed. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't know how to freestyle. Me neither. It was, it was <laughs> awful. I didn't. We just didn't grow up freestyling. Like I, I wish I, I wish I would have, but that definitely was new to me, and it wasn't my comfort zone. I was not gonna go out there and do something cool. <laughs> <laughs> It could have been horribly wrong. Everybody had been wondering why is she dancing for Janet Jackson. <laughs> That's, that that was my experience. So so it was just it was just a safer choice, you know. <laughs> I think to add to that is that you know we got to remember what era we were in in dance. You know, back then, freestyle was not you know that was a newer term. I think you know in the hip hop world, and y'all had you know classical training, you know jazz and things like that. So Tina was just great at mixing all of the foundational dances with the you know these raw hip hop freestyle elements. 
And so at the time, females didn't really do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And so to their, you know, the, to, to what they were doing at the time, that that's what we, that's what you did. So it just, you know, for people yeah. to go, you know, nowadays girls freestyle all the time, but mm-hmm. back then that wasn't the case. So, you know, thank you for that. Yeah. And so people don't know, Teresa actually choreographed the piece that, um, Nikki Kelly and I did in Throb. So it was like our little piece. But the funny story is, I forgot, we should have mentioned this when, um, when Sean, when we spoke to Sean, but sometimes Sean and I would backstage would bet each other, like before you, cause she would go out before me. I'm like, I dare you. I dare you. Don't choreograph. Cause sometimes she would go for it, right? If she was like hanging out with Rob and, and Mike, like during the sound check and she'd get, you know, get her confidence. She would go out and freestyle, but she, Seanette was one that could freestyle. She was just scared to, right? So, but I'm like, like I'm, I'm behind her, going, "I dare you, I dare you." She's like, "I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it." And then she gets out there, and I'm watching her from the wings, going, "Chicken!" But <laughs> we bet each other to see, like, I'll bet you your per diem that I'm gonna freestyle. So every once, so I'd say probably five times, I actually freestyle, and then the rest was like, "Yeah, I'm not doing this anymore." No, nope. <laughs> doesn't feel good to me. But T, you had a great scissor kick. It was awesome. That was the only thing I had. That's the- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to ask Tice because Tice, we have never talked about your elegant like freestyle business on Throb. You were so cool. Come on now, that kick, like just, you had attitude going. It was amazing. Did you love Throb? Did you love coming out? It was, you know, it's such a great number, but yeah, it was always scary to like do, I think maybe, I don't know how you guys felt, but like, it was scary to like get out there sometimes because I don't know, it was like, you know, freestyle, you know, I don't know, we, you know, at auditions, we would be asked to freestyle, right? You know, and it was like, you just never know what was going to (laughs) happen. But I think what was great about having like Rob and, and Teresa and Mike was that we, I think it gave us all a lot of confidence, you know, mm-hmm. being around them because, you know, we went out, we would go out like socially and, you know, we would dance and we would have fun and we would be like, you know, whatever, just having a great time. And that really, I, I don't know, that helped me, you know, and like, and then I, it gave me more confidence on stage. So when I would go and do throb or, you know, things of that nature, <laughs> it, it just got better and better, I think for me, you know. It always amazed me that you could do that, but in a different, you know, it, it had a little technical flair. Mm-hmm. You're free. I mean, obviously that's what you were going <laughs> to do. Right. But it was like, I was like, God, how could he do that? <laughs> he um, do we, uh, we've had a, uh, actually a bunch of questions and I, uh, about this. So I want to make sure I get to it. Um, the American music awards performance of together again with the remix so you're all nodding your head. So I think there was lots of love for this. Uh, T, do you want to just explain like when you got the news and why you decided to go with the remix and not the original? Um, honestly, I don't remember everything about that other than um, we as a group, like we all loved that version of it. And Janet really didn't like doing things that weren't the single. She felt that the fans were expecting that and she wanted to give them what you know what they were hoping for and and so i don't know if it was just us all going please 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 and a little bit of renee going jan this might be good because i remember she was i don't you know she wasn't like a hundred percent yes this is what we're doing i think she really had to get um convinced to do it um, and that's my recollection, but you know, my brain is like, eh. um, and then once we did, it was, it, cause it's such a different vibe, right? It was, it was just one of those that we were again, all excited as a group knowing like, oh my God, the fans are going to flip when they hear this version. Cause no one knew that that's what we were doing. Mickey, I think you like this performance. You're nodding along. I lot. love this performance. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> like she said, it was just different. And um, I just, you know, when we look back at the performance, I, I love it because we're just such a unit. We're so clean. We're so crisp and, you know, and, and 
um, just makes me happy. Yeah. Phil? Yeah. Wasn't the choreo a little, like, way different, too? Like, yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. It was so cool. The stairs and coming down yeah. the stairs. There was a lot, of, a lot of bouncing going on. I remember. <laughs> I loved it. Cool. I thought it was super cool. I uh, actually recently watched that performance like yesterday. And I something that stuck out to me was Tice's face in that uh, performance. Tice was super smiley. Like he was feeling <laughs> it. So Tice, how much did you love the DJ Premier American <laughs> performance? <laughs> Wait, did you ask me a question? Or? I did, I did. How much did you love that performance? Because you were super <laughs> smiling in the videotape of it. <laughs> well, yeah, I think there's a, a moment that like the camera came and I was like, whatever, you know, like feeling good about it. But I think that that choreography honestly is, is just unbelievable. I think that it was so unique. I think, I think it stands the test of time, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. It's, it's actually so creative and so, it's just so, it's really edgy. And it's, it, I think that, you know, they take the song and they flipped it on its face and, and, and you know, um, like Tina was saying, you know, maybe Janet had a little bit of apprehension about it, but I think it, it proved really good for, for that mm -hmm. performance. Cause mm -hmm. you ask any dancer today and they will, they will tell you about that performance. And they, they say to me, um, they wish that they were part of that. They wish that they could have danced that choreography. And so there you have it. Uh, well, from a fan, sorry, go ahead, go T, go, go. Say that one, I, most of the fans know, but um, I had though, there was one section in there um, that Rob and Mike were a part of and we were all vibing in the room and I would just kind of watch them um, because Rob, especially it's like, to ask him to remember what he did, just did, he'd be like, oh, what did I do? And I'm like, you did something like this. I don't know, can you? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, just dance, just dance. And so that's where this whole thing came in from, was with him and Mike doing it. And and Mike would pull off of, they would just really feed off of each other really well. So it was me kind of watching them going, okay, y'all can't remember what you just did, but I do. I'm going to pick it apart and put it together. And that's, but that that look came from the two of them in that in that one section. Now, speaking from a fan's perspective, I'm not sure if this is actually factual or technically factual, but it felt like, and T, you can confirm or deny, uh, that Rob was often paired up with Janet. Like if she needed a dude, uh, he was the man. You know, like especially on the staircase, like I think that top of the pops performance, Rob's the one that's turning the chair around, like all that stuff on Oprah. I think he did the same thing. Um, so Rob, was it? Uh, like extra pressure on you to know that you're going to be paired up with Janet a lot or was it just fun for you and, and you were excited to dance with the boss I was just it was just fun dancing with the boss I you know there's <clears> our <throat> times when you're like oh I hope I don't push you over <laughs> oops I hope I don't knock the chair over oops how do you and I'm, I think a couple of times I asked how do you want me to turn the chair I think Tina had a work on me with that because I was like I'm, I want to be as gentle as possible because I was nervous sometimes it just standing next to her was fine dancing with her was fine but when it comes to props it was uh, especially that little stairs you know coming down the stairs with her and holding her down you know and because I, I, I believe because if uh no offense but I think because Tina fell down a lot so I would have that <laughs> vision in my head that would be stuck camp inside my thoughts like oh my gosh what if she falls like Tina you know, but um, uh, those things did cross my mind. So uh, it's just a prop. I got nervous dancing with her next door. I, I loved it. Uh, Tina, can you tell us, because I'm, I'm assuming you might know this. Maybe maybe Kelly knows this. Maybe Nikki knows this. Uh, for Janet for Velvet, obviously the whole tour uh, or the show for her has to have been amazing. She signed off on everything. But is there? A, do you remember if there's a favorite section of the show for Janet? Like, did she love the ending? Did she love special? Did she love what about like the most? Like, was there something that stuck out to her? The thing that sticks out to me that I think she would say is probably the whimsical section because it was so light and fun. And I think that was a time where she, the pressure could come off of her a little bit because there was so much going on stage. And it was a time that we could all act silly and we all would take, you know, <laughs> we would all take great lengths to make sure that we got in front of her face and kind of played with her and really pulled her into our world. So I'm guessing it's, we never had that conversation, but 
it it was the most chilled fun section of the show where she could i think just kind of let her guard down a little bit so that would be my guess I'm glad you brought up the whimsical because here's a question. Tina's talked about this before in interviews that we've done, her and I, about how one time the inflatables did not inflate. <laughs> and so now that I have all of you here, I have to ask about this. So we're going to start with uh, Teresa because I think uh, you had to like try to keep things yes. going while the inflatables were not happening. And Tina, did you have to sign to her or something to say like it's not happening, just go? I, could, I couldn't. We had no way of connecting because um i came out first and then as i left the stage teresa came so there was no way i already knew what was happening because i looked in first and went oh crap but i couldn't <laughs> tell her that and so i don't know if rex if anyone was able to get to you teresa prior to coming out or did you just know i just got to keep this going yeah no i well, I think I did. I, I did look in and I could see that they weren't inflated. So I just had to keep the crowd going. Like I ran to one side and like was like, hey, can you know, can't hear you cheer, you know, and then I ran to the other and I just had to take up some space because, you know, it, they weren't ready. And and uh, yeah, it just it's it's funny because that's on the HBO special. It was like the, the time that it was being filmed. And I, I, I don't remember it happening prior to that. Um, so it was, it was very interesting that it, that it, it happened on the one time we we're filming. <laughs> you just kind of have to go with it. Uh, for that time, guys, Kel, I'll start with you. Like knowing now that you don't have the inflatables to do your, your section on, like, did you guys just fill space until you had your choreography? I honestly don't even remember what we did. You guys, I'm sure we just came out on the stage and just acted silly yeah. with whatever we had to we probably went and played with the band more <laughs> right do you guys yeah. remember exactly what we did i think we just kind of <laughs> filled the space the show must go on so we yeah. just, you know do do what we were told to do to it's probably just like just get out there <laughs> <laughs> um tina people have been asking a bunch of questions that's similar again coming in after the the show was over at whatever city you're in are you at like a basketball coach and are you guys going over film footage after in the bus saying like oh we could take yeah it she had notes <laughs> Ever. We, well, at least i thought she had like this thing called the eagle eye where she could be on stage and just i mean she would see everything and be on stage i was like okay <laughs> yeah and it, Videos were like when I would tell people after, like I would give notes in the dressing room, obviously just to the girls. Um, and sometimes I'd give them to the boys. They're like, no, I didn't. Like, yeah, you did. No, I didn't. And then we'd get on the bus and I'd press pause, go, see? Oh, yeah. Like, if you're looking at me, your face is in the wrong spot. You should be looking at the back of your head, not your face. So, yeah, we, we did. And the funny thing is, I didn't really... I guess I kind of did that in dance team. We would watch back because we were always in high school. We were judged on certain things. So we would watch it back like game tape, right? And go, oh, this is where we were all off on our triples. This is where we were early on our hitch kick or whatever. So I think that's where that came from. Aside from the fact that we're just all vain and we want to we want to see the show. We want to see, you know, so we'd have to watch it a couple of times because the first time we're just watching ourselves be great on stage, right? We're like, oh, look at me. And then we'd like, okay, now let's watch it again and let's pause here. Tice, look at this, or Nikki, look at that. Or I remember one, oh, it was the time that may have been for the other uh, Janet tour. I just remember it was one of one of my many falls, but I remember the camera was here and I'm dancing, and then all of a sudden I go down. <laughs> <laughs> I totally remember that. So yes, we did watch game tape, we did have notes and we were usually eating on the bus and drinking by that point. Um, so we have just a few more, more questions to wrap up. I want to call this the uh, fast fact round of things. So um, who's most likely to have been out shopping while on tour? Let's time out people here. Let's do it. Who's out shopping? Nikki and Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Sean. All of us really. We all, all. Yeah, we all enjoyed a good mall. <laughs> Um, which of you, uh, when you were on tour was the tourist in a city, like who would go out and actually scope things out as opposed to hanging in the hotel? Kelly. Both. I, I think you and I, and yeah, we, we would do that. 
I yeah. would say the three of us. Well, I don't know, Tice, maybe Lil. You came. <laughs> yep. Always. Uh, who was the uh, the party animal on tour, or were there several? <laughs> Teresa, Sean. Yes. That's amazing. And Rob, did you like? Were you like sleep deprived often? Like, talk to us. Were you able to suck it up for the next day show? It was routine. I mean, by the time the show's programmed in your head, <laughs> it is just like, oh, I gotta get through this. Oh, oh, I can do it and then take a long shower and, and tell myself I'm not doing this again and then, of course <laughs> uh, who, uh, who out of the group gives the best advice Tina Tina Bonita <laughs> Tice Tice gave me good advice um, who has the biggest appetite on tour who's always eating yeah <laughs> <laughs> Take one for Team Canada, Kel. Go, girl. <laughs> it's really cold. We need more food. We need more calories up here. Um, and I, I think maybe each of you are gonna have to answer this. What was the coolest gift or gesture that Janet did for you while on the Velvet Rope project? Uh, Teresa, can I start with you? You say remember everything, so yeah. Well, the pro Prada bag, and then she gifted us this. So one second, it's literally sitting on my shelf right now. But a Rolex or Cartier, Cartier, yes, Cartier. Cartier watch oh, in the box. Yeah, it's still in the box. Twenty-five years later, I never yeah. wear it. Just sitting here. Classic. Mm. So you all got that at the end of the tour. I think it was for Christmas, right? Christmas. It was, Christmas. It was for Christmas, I believe. It was a beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. Would you sell yours, Kel? <laughs> no, I still have it. I, I still have it. Talking about it like it's past tense. <laughs> no, I would do something like that though. I I get rid of everything and then I go, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> but no, I do. I still have my cartoon watch for sure. Tice, what was the coolest gesture that Janet did for you? Um, I would say you know. I would say something that really meant a lot to me was um, that photo shoot. And we had, you know, when we, we took pictures for the tour book. I mean, I didn't, none of us knew what the pictures were gonna be. And then we, I remember the tour book came, you know, we went to the, we were in the show and we were like, oh, the tour book is, we're gonna see it today. And you open up the tour book and there was a, a beautiful picture of, of Janet and I, and as we all had moments with Janet. So that to me really meant a lot, mm -hmm. so. That's really sweet. Uh, Rob, best gesture from Janet? Best gesture is going to, uh, what is it, was it Milan? I can't remember, going to, is it Milan? We went to the model show. Uh, it was me, I think Tina, Sean, went to this model show and I remember, that uh, I guess they remember I was a big fan of Demi Moore and Demi Moore happened to be backstage and here's Sean, Janet and Tina walking in front of me and then all of a sudden I hear oh hey girl how you doing and they just say oh look who I brought he's a big fan of yours and there's Demi Moore and I'm just speechless couldn't say no words he tells me at the time she was married to Bruce Willis oh you have the same hairstyle as my husband and then she <laughs> rubbed my head and, and I, I lost it that was the biggest, greatest gesture ever. I could say oh. one word. And I remember they were la you know, laughing because I was sitting there going, uh, 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 uh. I couldn't come up with no words. That was it. That was my best. Yeah. Kelly, best gesture from Janet. Oh, God. I don't know. There's just too many. I mean, just how sweet she was always to my family. Sorry, my dogs, my dogs are crazy right now. Uh, she was just always so sweet to my family and always asked about how is your mom and dad? And still to this day, she, uh, you know, if we do speak, she's always asking about my parents and I, and I love that. Vicki? I think to me, the biggest gesture was how um, she made us feel so, um, uh, that she was so grateful for us. I mean, she would do, she did so many, so many things. I mean, from, you know, sleepovers at her house, she would take us on grand vacations. I mean, 
we had the best life, living the best life. She did not put us in the B hotels. We were in the A hotels with her. Um, she made us feel special. And I think that had a lot to do with why, um, why both tours were so special to all of us, I think, um, because she made us feel important. She gave us, she gave us um, voices, I mean, to, or just to be seen. And, and she, um, she made dancers important. And so I think that was the biggest gesture from, from Janet for me. Tina? <clears throat> I, there's no way on earth I could name just one. Like from day one, everything that everyone has said, um, <clears throat> the many, many vacations. I mean, I've seen parts of the world I would never ever have seen on this earth on my own. Um, so I like, yeah, I, there's just, there's, she's just gracious. She's always been gracious and loving and, um, and yeah, I, I can't, there's not just one thing. There's, there's a plethora of things. Um, so we're just about to wrap up. I'm going to ask each of you two questions to wrap things up. So you're all going to answer this. So the question is, I'm going to start with Teresa. Uh, Teresa, message to the fans that are watching on this 25th anniversary. And also, if you can tell us what it means to you to be hanging out with your Velvet Rope dancers tonight. Oh, well, when I got the email that this was happening, I just, it's just, you never know how life unfolds and there's always gifts, you know, and to me, this is a gift that just keeps giving, you know, tw 25 years later. And to the fans, it's, I've, I am one of them still to this day. And that's why I can sit here. And I, I can't believe I, I am sitting here at the table with these legends and gifted, talented, incredible people that I got to dance with and learn from at the same time. And I think honestly, that that's what helped my career like 25 years later, that I got to learn from the best and to the fans, I'm, I, I am one of you. And it's just an honor that I got to experience this with everybody here. And, you know, it's just a special moment and I'm, I'm proud to be a fan and experience it and be able to, you know, be a part of everything. Rob, what is your message to the fans and what does it mean to you to be with us tonight? A message to the fan. This is the greatest moments ever. Uh, I seen the interview with the girls, but I was shocked that to see that Teresa and myself and Tice was added to the crew. Uh, it was great because uh, I know Kelly and Nikki and Tina has, you know, they had did an interview and they have all the like a lot of stuff to say. But I think the main thing was that uh, being with everyone together, bringing back great memories. I wasn't quite sure how this was going to be, but. It turned out to be a really great moment. Tice, you're up. Um, I would like to say thank you to the very loyal fans of Janet and the Velvet Rope Tour. Um, they're, they're really very special and incredible as we've all experienced. So thank you very, very much for being a part of our lives in this way. And, you know, my friends here, I... <laughs> It's, it's so, it's so beautiful to just like, just share in this moment with y'all. And like, um, I'm so thankful for the experience that we had together. Um, it'll, it'll be something that has changed me as a person and as an artist. And I'll take that with me. I know we'll all take that with us forever. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that I was a part of this unbelievable project and thank you tina i have so much um respect for you and not only are you my friend but i have so much respect i learned so much from you and you know from all of you and so and so i'm so happy that i was asked to be here and and that i could partake in the in the you know in all the things so thank you so much nikki you're up message to your fellow dancers and to the fans 
Um, I just want to say to my fans, thank you for your support throughout the years. You guys have definitely made me feel super, super special. Um, and to my dancer friends, um, am I frozen? I don't know. A little, a little bit, but we're still hearing you. Okay. Hear you. Um, <laughs> I love you guys so much. This was such a special time for me. Um, and to be able to experience it with you guys meant so much. I know we don't all see each other um, as much as we would like, but you are forever in my heart. I love you all so, so much. Loved dancing with you on stage. I wish we could do it again at some point, um, but I love you guys. Thank you for Kelly, being here. Uh, to the fans, um, I miss you guys for one. <laughs> I never, I never see anybody anymore because I'm never on social media. But I do miss you guys. Um, watching, watching the tour today, I was just like, look at them. You know, um, there certain people will be stuck in my brain. You know, for the rest of my life. Um, but thank you for making us feel special, and and making us just feel like superstars. You know what I mean? I know we're, we were dancing for Janet and you were there for Janet, but you gave us um, so much love and, um, and energy. So thank you for that. And to my fellow dancers that I haven't seen and Kelly always just supporting us like for, throughout the years. It's just so lovely to see all your guys' faces. Um, you know, get, getting back on Zoom, I had one of those, Ugh. You know, I'm sure that we all do from the pandemic. Zoom, I was like, oh my God, I haven't opened up a Zoom call for a minute. Um, so of course that anxiety, you know, that anxiety, but that, that it just all just dis disappears when I see your guys' faces. And I just miss all of you so much and I hope you're doing so well. And thank you for uh, giving me memories that I'll, you know, take, take with me forever. So I love you guys. Tina. Um, to the fans, thank you guys so much. You have been so loyal and so loving and you really are the reason when we are tired that we get out there and want to do our best. And the fact that you are still here, how many years later, 25, like it's just crazy. And so we wouldn't be doing this today if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you all very, very, very much. And to my fellow babies, you guys are still babies to me. Um, I could ask for a better crew and a better experience. And, you know, we all grew together because of each other, um, because of the tour, because of Janet. And I'm just feel so blessed that we, had an opportunity to be together and to be a part of something that was so special. It was really just like a, something that it feels almost frozen in time. Like we couldn't possibly have known 25 years ago that we would be a, doing a Zoom call for fans that were still interested in the Velvet Rope or us. And so I want to thank all of you and Kelly, thank you for making this possible because you are a huge, huge, huge Janet fan, and you've always been a fan of all of us. And you um, are so respectful with your interviews, and it just becomes a party when we get together. So it, this would not happen without you. So I owe you a big, big thank you, and I love you, and I love all you guys. <laughs> thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, just before I sign off, or we sign off, I just want to, first of all, thank um, all the fans who've tuned in tonight who are so excited over the last like two months gearing up for this. I just so the dancers know, uh, people hope that December 4th becomes a national holiday. We've got some of those messages <laughs> wow. uh, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Velvet Rope. So fans, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for the support of our show. Uh, on behalf of the, the fans, uh, Velvet Rope team, just thank you for the memories that you gave us 
um, for the experiences that you gave us, because those things last, last a lifetime better than, than anything else that we could experience. So you guys were all a part of that with Janet. We're so grateful for uh, your talent and your passion and what you, you brought to the stage. So on behalf of the fans, thank you so much for that. I want to thank all the people who helped me tonight put this together. Again, Tina Landon, uh, Amy Stevland, Mikey Gar Garcia, Kristen Jerome, and Elaine Gilmore. And uh, last but not least, again, a, a shout out to Gil and Seanette. Uh, who could not be here tonight again this live stream in honor of michael um who passed away and we send our, our love obviously to him and uh guys before you guys bounce off i'm just going to stop the live stream but if you can hold on for a second to the actual zoom call so fans